Brian, and I guess you're... I've got our annual report for the Department of Agriculture. Just basically goes over the everything we've done in 2013. So you need to set out the hall. <laughs> <laughs> That's for people who complain. Oh. Change my chemistry up on our chemical mo. Looking up some stuff instead of, and they said that camera is going to be really tough to come by this year. Be expensive, so there's some new stuff coming out. I don't know if heard detail. I've heard of that. Uh, use that to replace it. That camera is probably going to use. Also change up some chemistry on our, on our chemical mo. What uh, What do you think about having Phil, like we did last year, having Phil mow the back slopes a little more often in the summertime? Do you think that? Well, oh, well, 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 let's see I mean, what it helps, is for the it helps the farmers right. keep from spraying the ditch. Right, right. Well, like last year, it well, got wet and it really didn't. Right. I mean, it was three days after the mower's back up. Back up, yeah. Well, I mean, just we could find the time, it'd be nice to, you know, it'd be a mid season spray. Yeah. That's what would help more right. as a broad leaf yeah. spray. Yeah. But then you just get into with the, with the crops there. It's yeah. just hard to do. Yeah. But, but yeah, I mean, it doesn't hurt at all. It, Knock it down, keep it Have you talked to Phil, maybe possibly about doing some more spraying? Than We've talked a little bit about it. About it's it. just you know with the, on what we can yeah, use. With right. The, with the, the beans is the main right the main thing. And so I mean we have talked about it, and it's just finding time then to do it to do it yeah. with the with the vine we spray and everything. But I think that would be the best if we could get it. Like, like yeah, chemical. Yeah. Something like that. They say, well, last year we got the rain, they mowed, and then it got wet, and I mean, it just, pigweed exploded again. And that's my, my chemical mow isn't going to last. Right. It doesn't long. long for the pigweed. And that's the big thing, is that back slope of that pigweed. Mm -hmm. so. But yeah, we can stop trying to figure something out, because I think that'd be the best. Mm -hmm. we can find, if we go to the broad leaf, we can try to get some grasses established on the back slope again. Like you said, you know, the farmer spray and kill everything back, and yeah. the only thing that's going to come is weeds. So, mm -hmm. but I'll work with Bill on that. Would be neat to try try that. Yeah, so, yeah, I'd like to just try to find something because it would yeah. it would help a bunch. Mm -hmm. And like I said, try to get the grasses established again. Yeah. So. How about overall bindweed control? Stay even with it or get further behind? Or? It's well, like this this last year, it, I got. I was behind, but you know, because well, usually you can do well, you can see it 
these are the, in our drought years. I mean, the vine weed was still there, but you could find it. Yeah. This last year, when everything was growing up, it was hard to find. I just wanted to overall if you thought we were we have more of a problem. You know, Actually, less because consistent. more people are chem following, and then you got areas in some heavier ground where there's still the, the plowing and stuff. But most people are chem following with, with a Roundup 2,4-D or something, and taking care of it like right after right after weed harvest. They go in and that keeps it from seeding. I mean, it doesn't get rid of all the plants, but it keeps it from seeding. So, and, and that's helping most farmers are have their own sprayers and stuff now too, so I think it's yeah, I think it's getting spraying a little more often. But I did find musk thistle this year that I hadn't found. There were just four, four big more spots more. Yeah. That, that, that I found too late and we'll hit them this spring. So but that is giving me a bigger problem though. And that's more I'm you know, that's what we were talking about with our you know within our association is trying to find that stuff that's not established like the wine weed and try to keep the musk thistle, the streets and all that from, from really getting a hold on it. Because everything's just moving from the southeast to the northwest, so we're getting more of everything. Good. And some weeds I've never heard of. Well, and I hate to take any more time, but they are they were talking about opening the noxious weed law and changing to the noxious weed law that would give the county commissioners more say in what they want as far as the noxious weed in their county. It's not going to go this year, but it's all we need is one more job. Well, that's mm -hmm. one more weed. Well, one more. <laughs> well, that's what they're, they're talking about doing is opening up more of a regulatory instead of in statute. Mm -hmm. It's going to be more of a regulatory and mm -hmm. give you guys, if there is a problem in your county, that you could go after. So, but we'll see if that comes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Pam? I make a motion to approve the minutes of last meeting. Whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> Somebody's sleeping. I second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the minutes from the January 22nd. 22nd meeting. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no. Motion carried. That one too. I'll make a motion. We accept the factual corrections. Second. Okay, we have a motion and second to approve the factual corrections. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no. Motion carried. Now I believe we're ready. <laughs> I don't know if I can talk about just means. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty bad. Obnoxious tomcats? Yeah, exactly. We have buried subjects. Yes. Um, so I don't know if you're familiar with the SNAP program from that the Humane Society has been doing for a few years, but basically we just help people spay and neuter their animals that are promoting their families. Go ahead. Okay. And um, it's been going since 2010, started with the grant. And the, popul or the popularity of the program's grown, and we've had a pretty good success raising funds, but we've kind of outgrown our ability to, to raise funds. And one of our donors has given less. She gave $10,000 a year. She's not going to do that this year. Not because she doesn't like the program, but just because she's moving on to another charity. So I'm trying to be um, creative as far as trying to fund the program. Medicine Lodge started their own program, so they're kind of out of the Pratt program. Um, I know that Stafford County doesn't really have any Green Society animal type organization, so I, I feel that's important. Um, you know, we can offer some new services to Stafford County, but. Last year, the city of Stafford gave us some money, which was helpful. They gave five hundred dollars, and then we did the accounting, and they're like, "Well, this person doesn't live in Stafford, and this person doesn't live in Stafford." And blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, "Okay, we can separate it out by jurisdiction, and you know, I found a bookkeeper that will do that. I'm the money maker here, and the options are good." So, th so I was just requesting that. 
I think that's open to negotiation. I think there probably have to be a fee associated with it. You know, but if you're interested, I can get you in contact. I've heard several people complain about that. Just tell them to say you got them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's not right, but that's what I was driving around. Right on the county line. Right on the old Dutch. Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> now you're located on just in Stafford, in uh, Pratt County. Yeah, just, just on this. Yeah. yeah, on Stafford Road. Yeah, just off by Wild House. Right. Off of the, okay. Yeah, senior side. Yeah. Now, the only knowledge I have about neutering program is one that's over in Lyon County at Emporia. Okay. And they they have a contact, I think, in Gardner, the vet in Gardner okay. that does the neutering and spaying. And, and they gather up these animals and they, and they have a van, they call it the neuter school. Oh, right. <laughs> I, I don't know if it's once a week or once a month or whatever they, but you know, that's a distance. Yes, and I think, um, the Friends for Felines actually found out how much it cost to have them come down, and it was it was cost prohibitive. Yeah. Um, we've done some spay days at my clinic. This program is kind of separate from that. When I say spay days, I mean we trap all the feral cats, spay them and neuter them, chop their top of their ear off, mm -hmm. and then put them back, and then they over time die out and don't reproduce. And kind of mm -hmm. Population. Um, Can you do that with armadillos? <laughs> <laughs> I wish. I caught one armadillo once. That was it. Mm -hmm. I didn't see them. I caught one too. But this one, this program has all different vets that participate, mm -hmm. even in Great Bend and Pratt County. So it's not really meant to steer anybody towards my clinic or anybody else's clinic. It's just trying to get the positive. You know, basically we're trying to decrease intakes for the shelter and try to target animals that wouldn't have been done otherwise. I think it's been pretty successful. But, you know, we always have people that won't do it. A lot of people do. But typically out of Stafford County, you use that kind of full amount of money? Well, you know, I don't know. I have We didn't collect the data that way. And then I asked the lady who had all the vouchers, and she basically told me to apply a kite. Because we had to call each person to right. figure out if they lived in the city limits or out of the city limits. Because everybody has an address that has a city attached to it. But. Like the people that. Well, I meant just the Stafford County as a whole. Oh, yeah, yeah. If, um, if, if, if the city of Stafford gave you 500 and St. John gives you, you know, what you have planned out here, I think is there money left over from, from our so called contribution as an mm -hmm. entire county in the three cities? or Right. And, and if so, what what's done with that money? I mean, well, it, does it stay there and roll over to the yeah, next year yeah. the program? I think I put that yeah, in the letter. I didn't read it all. Over yeah, that was my plan. We just carry over and then adjust the budget. But um, the 500 lasted like two months. So that, but that was for all of Stafford County. I can't tell you exactly which jurisdiction yeah, yeah. it came from, and, and we can keep track of that this year to be more specific. Okay. But um, I just don't have that information. We've done over a thousand animals. So we've <laughs> yeah. just have, you know, this was a place to start. Start, yeah. And then kind of, you know, adjust as we need to. But yeah, definitely the money would stay, stay. in that account designated for these people. For yeah. Citizens. And then we would say, okay, well, we spent this much last year. Adjust the budget. I would tell you to go to Hudson, but I'm just afraid those people are probably looking to go to Great Bend. You know, I mean, we're kind of caught halfway in between there. I don't know. That yeah. Well, I mean, if there's area events that are participating in the same program. The Great Bend vet still. countryside does. Okay. Um, participate. Well, you might go visit the city. Hudson? Hudson. I got some council at Hudson. They might help a little bit. Okay. The other two, uh, I am. Yeah, I don't think so. Hudson would not be a 
Okay. You might have a chance there. Okay. That seems pretty progressive. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't know anything. Stafford, St. John, and I just go on the headset. Okay. Well, there's a kid's dad that was sitting right in here with two of them to talk to. With, I mean, I, and he's still on the He's so still on the city council. He's the mayor. He's the mayor. What's that, his last name? Wit. W I T T. Yeah, he'd be. Okay. We'll do something there. I'd make a motion we would donate $1,000 to the Pratt Area Community Society for the SNAP program. 1000 or 1000 I'd say 1000 Just to okay. see how Close the program goes. <laughs> yeah. I'll second that motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second. For Stafford County to donate a thousand dollars to the SNAP program. All in favor say aye. 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 There is no motion carried. Do you want to sign a letter of understanding? We can just cross out that amount. Sure. I've got one here. Okay. I've changed it to put letter of understanding between Stafford County and the Pride Area Humane Society. The county of Stafford has made a oh, thousand dollar contribution, and then this means a qualifying cut owner from the county takes their path, right? Yes. Did I leave city? In yeah, there? you put city in there. I can. You can either yeah, retype this, or I can redo it, or whatever. It's the same just one I did. Yeah, I fine. just brought that awesome. down. Yeah. Hudson, six miles. Okay. Six so it's miles. north of here? Mm -hmm. North. Okay. East. There's, There's a little church. White church on that corner. <laughs> Is it occupied then? I don't know. The, the <laughs> <thing>. <laughs> I'll, I'll explain that recess. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, make the check to Pratt Area Human Society now. Yes. And then send it to you? Yeah, you can send it to, why don't you send it to uh, my No, this is for the hike and bike trail that they're applying for a grant to do a hike and bike okay. at the scenic outlook. At Quivira or at up north? Up north. Like Cheyenne yeah. Bottoms? Okay. And all the I mean, just some yeah. filler, just letter yeah. of support. Since you have your letter here. <coughs> Since I'm 
Oh, you don't lie. Well, it hurts. It hurts on the committee as well. <laughs> yeah. Did you second that? <laughs> yes, I did. I second that. <laughs> okay. okay, we have a motion. A second to so he assign the uh, report to the Kansas Department of Transportation in support of the grant for the Kansas bicycle route. That's good. Close enough. That's, That's good. close. That's good. <laughs> All favor say aye. 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 There was no motion for that. You guys just thought I would let you go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, Carol. Okay, so. so we don't need other copies. No, I just made copies for everything. Okay, good copy. And make you a copy. Oh, wow. All right. Okay. Use so the new copier on now. I will. We'll so I can throw all these away. Yeah, sure. And keep that one. What's your name? Okay. You have my attention. Woo! I know that was a load. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's the first. Um, a couple weeks ago, we uh, discussed the concept of a port authority, and I just wanted mm -hmm. to give you some updates on the research that I've done. I don't have a resolution for you today, but you know, um, we have one next week if we'd like. Um, some of the places I've been, been pulling some information from are um, continue to talk with Joe Norton, who's with Gilmore and Bell, and um, that's the firm in Wichita that does a lot of public finance legal work. And I, and I thought just giving you just a simple copy of his summary would be well, I don't think there's a lot new there, but it does put it kind of in a concise way in writing. Um, and uh, there's a group in Southwest Kansas that put together a port authority a few years ago, oriented toward um, improving the Cimarron Vale at Valley Railroad. And um, so I've also drawn from some of the things that they've done. Got some copies of resolutions that those counties have passed, and cases just got them yesterday so I thoroughly really absorbed them and would like another week to kind of do that um, but they have gone through a process of, of using this legal structure to pool resources um, receive federal and state funding and um, and you know further the development of infrastructure and in the course of talking with them, I've also found another firm that does legal work that might be kind of a good second opinion and um, um, a good place to get an underestimate of what, what legal costs could come down the road. And I um, had my first conversation with that firm yesterday, John Frieden in Topeka, um, apparently does a lot of work with Heiniger and Smith, who uh, a couple years ago we looked at the idea of joining the Yeah. It was a, a, a group, yes. Um, Ellie, um, Kansas Legislative yeah. Policy Group. Remember, they oh. they sent us a packet, and they weren't going to come out and talk to us, and they never From did. Southwest Kansas County area. They, they basically represent a lobbying sense, a lot of Western Kansas interests, and, and maybe a lot centered on oil-related issues. So they're. For just frame of reference, they are doing work with legal or with the Western Kansas is the same firm. You know, it's a different issue. Different they're based. They're based out of Topeka. Right. They're okay. they're lobbyists. Yeah. Uh, right. But aren't most of the counties that are in in Southwest Kansas? Mm, no, because uh, Edwards County, they have their own lobbyists, but they also belong to this group. Barber County belongs to the group. Um, now you're talking about. This Port Authority in Southwest Kansas? No. No. I'm talking about just that lobbying group. No. The lobbying group is like 50 counties. No. Is it? I heard it. I had a guy hit me up at the last meeting, Boyd Bohr, I think he's the president of that day. He talked to you. From Barber County. Yeah. yeah. Barber County. But right. Remember a couple of years ago mm -hmm. they sent these packets? I still have the packets. I'm actually kind of surprised they haven't showed up in the trade. Well, they were supposed yeah. to. They, they were supposed did. to. We invited them down. Yeah. Really? Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, he asked me if he could come again. I said, well, yeah, you can come. And he yeah, yeah. I haven't heard a word. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we. So I had so, talked yeah. with him a couple okay. years ago on that. <laughs> and then 
you know, it's a different issue, but same same group. And um, honestly, on the lobbying side of things, I thought at first he was doing legal stuff. He's not he's lobbying. I mean, not that I'm lobbying. I'm representing the county, doing the work that we we just don't have to hire lobbyists to do that. So. Um, that would be basically the idea of um, working with you on a resolution and working with the state legislature on a concurrent resolution there. And I think we can work through that process with the relationships we already have with our representatives. And um, but we do still need to have some legal um, counsel on the implementation stage of things. And I'd like to have a scope of what that work will cost or an estimate before we get into it too far. I mean, I, 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 in the, all of the discussions I've had, I've had affirmation that there's not a lot of risk of just authorizing it during the period of time that you can while the legislature's in session. Um, but I still think that we all should have an idea of what could come down the road. Um, which, which comes first, the resolution from the county or the resolution from the state? I don't know that it says specifically. I think logically speaking, the state should be asked to act before the county does. So um, I have talked with both Mitch Holmes and um, Marshall Christman just to get tell them that we've been discussing this and that we may be contacting them with um, further information. And they both express openness to helping in economic development how they could. So, um, Joe is willing to come at a later date. He specifies that he can't until the second, after the second week of February, I believe it is. Um, so he's open to coming, and then uh, John Frieden has told me that he will also provide me an estimate of that scope of legal work. Um, so we should hopefully have that. I asked him to have it by a week from today. Um, so. Yeah, and like I said, I've got half a dozen or so other copies of resolutions that we can draw from. Generally speaking, what it'll say is, um, whereas the state of Kansas provides a legal, uh, a legal legality of developing an infrastructure related to transportation and you know, for the purposes of furthering economic development, and whereas Stafford County wants to further economic development in this way, you know, be it resolved that we um, authorize establishing court authority in Stafford County. It's oversimplification of it, but generally speaking, but it's what it'll amount to. And I, you, you get packets prior to your meeting, right? You can do like, what, what I need to have. Uh, um, I usually eat all that to a Tuesday. Okay. Wait. Or if it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's an uh, If it's real thin, you might get it to me on Monday and I can mail them. Uh, usually I just scan an email. Okay. Anything, I think. It's going to be a two or three page oh. thing. Yeah, we can just scan So if I got a two or three page Early Tuesday. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, you mentioned that one down in southwest Kansas. It seems like uh, when I first started, it was like, one or two counties, and now, remember he gave a talk at the KAC how, on the railroad, mm -hmm. whereas Ford County wanted to get involved, and so now that is expanded into a four or five county There is operation. the ability to, I mean that's in the statute, I can see that you can <coughs> add counties over mm -hmm. time, and um, I think that'd be great if we could make this more of a central Kansas hub, but I think getting into that at the first stage of the game might oh, complicate yeah. it a whole no. lot if we can just, no. No, they, without a lot of, I don't know. I think they just started out as the one county and you know, they became, it was successful until they had that rain and washed out the bridge and uh -huh. then they needed a billion dollars to rebuild the bridge. Well, there's two county commissioners, too, whose names I've gotten a hold of, and, and one of them I actually have an appointment to talk about this afternoon. His name was Marty Long from Ulysses, and apparently
apparently he spoke at some different conferences around the state too on the way that they've done theirs. But he's the chairman, I think, of the of the entity now. And um, so I'm going to ask him, you know, what his experience was and just like their, their scope of work mm -hmm. costs were and if they feel like it was work it's working mm -hmm. the way it should and. I, I had the perception that they were very focused on one thing, which was um, creating the financing or upgrading that Cimarron Valley Railroad. Apparently, there was a bridge, mm -hmm. not more than one, that burned during some wildfires, and and this was very specifically a mechanism to keep that railroad in operation. I don't have the perception that they are using it as an, an ongoing growth and development tool. But I, not really haven't had a lot of I, I would use this one as a growth tool. Right. <laughs> well, what, what they did, uh, I mean, they, they made the uh, <coughs> proposal for this rail line, and then they did the research on how much it, it took the traffic off of the highway and how much, you know, it was going to save the state and so on and so forth. But, and that's, that's how they got the state to buy it. Whereas, you know, I perceive this to be a sense of at the intersection of two major highways. I mean, it will be truck traffic or whatever it may be. But yeah. Well, we may still and be able to. Who says that, you know, we can't have a, a portal and, and hook onto the railroad? I mean, it's something, something we need to start. And it was what Dodge City or Garden City put in a crane just so they could unload the the uh, one mills garden. garden. That's right. Under a It's a huge facility. It's huge. More stuff laying on the ground. And <coughs> it's a very good example. Of what I'm but it makes sense. Try it here. Yeah. yeah. Right on. SAP reports. Does the sheriff do that? Same thing, saying you need to make sure you're 
emergency management planner. Got his work done in January for a, uh, a grant too. We are, did that, we signed that. that. Yeah, we signed that. Is that, that all too? Yeah. All right. So that's yeah, what he did. First that's, last right. that's probably what it was referring to. That was the one where he was gone and needed. That's right. Needed. Needed to deliver it. Did a job. Did a job. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else for me? I'd like a 15 minute executive session. I'd not like the personnel. Uh, I second that motion. I uh, have a motion for a 15 minute session for non elected personnel. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Adjourn or recess? I'll leave that or stick around. Thing we are adjourned. Good.